Monday, January 10, 2011, a day the people of Toowoomba will never forget. After a prolonged period of heavy rainfall, during which rain fell on 18 of the last 21 days, water catchments, dams and tanks were left overflowing, the ground saturated beyond further absorption. The past 36 hours saw 160 millimetres of rainfall over the region as the result of major thunderstorms. At approximately 1pm, the sky grew darker and rain fell from the clouds with a ferocity thought unimaginable. The city's two already overflowing creeks, East and West Creeks, could not handle the amount of water from the onslaught of rain. As thunder roared overhead, rain continued to fall as time seemingly froze, during which the creeks, one of which flows straight through the city centre, broke their banks as water erupted, spewing copious amounts of straight for the CBD. The generally flourishing CBD stood little chance against the masses of water. Low-lying portions of the CBD were completely submerged, the masses of water lifting cars and storage containers with ease. There was a rescue underway at Grand Central and I was just fortunate at the time that I had my um, equipment with me to be able to don into a wetsuit and uh, work with the fellas there. It's a team effort, work with them to effect the rescue on the day. Depth wise, when I walked into it, um, when we set up our different strategies and the rope for me to go across on, it was over waist deep at the time um, and flowing too fast for me to actually walk across. It just took the legs out from under me and I had to hang onto the rope to get myself across. The floods left devastation in its wake, causing millions of dollars of damage to businesses and infrastructure, destroying roads and bridges, collapsing walls and exposing the interior of homes. Referred to by then Queensland Premier Anna Bly as an inland tsunami, the flash flooding of Toowoomba was a sight to behold and an experience that residents will never forget. Whilst the rest of the nation and much of the world were left with a sense of utter dread, the focus of residents was on cleaning up and rebuilding. Much of the shock of what was effectively a natural disaster was the vulnerability of the community and the honest naivete that existed that such a catastrophe could not and would not ever hit so close to home. So the whole thing was quite surreal and very difficult for the families. Um, in, for, for the whole community, to be quite honest with you. It was an emotional event and at the same time a surreal event where uh, you're in, in, in the middle of something, something's happening and uh, you can't quite believe it. Council has had the opportunity to look at CCTV um, footage of what happened in the CBD and it's most, uh, uh, most distressing for us as elected members and, and uh, leaders of the community uh, to see the behaviours of our uh, of pedestrians and drivers and um, makes us realise how when an event like this happens uh, we need always to be educating our young people and the community on behaviour and safety during these events. In the five years since the flooding, Toowoomba has been, in quite a literal sense, reborn. Whilst much has been done by way of necessity, the floods were a tipping point in the progression of Toowoomba effectively demonstrating that from the bad, there is often good that emerges. Look, I think we have the most amazing community. And for our community to go through what it did, in modern day life, we seem to lose those important uh, values. And when the floods came, we found them again. And our community found something that was that sense of community, that sense of all being in this together, I think it was amazing. I, I wouldn't live anywhere else. I just so admire our community. As the extensive flood recovery efforts near completion at a cost of approximately $258 million, recent years have seen major upgrades completed along both East and West Creeks. Portions of West Creek running through the low-lying CBD have been widened, 
so as to minimise the impact of a potential future flood. Various detention basins have been constructed along East Creek, designed to temporarily house flood water runoff during a flood event, periodically releasing water in a controlled manner as flood waters subside, so as to reduce the severity of any number of potential occurrences. Large emphasis was focused on enhancing the landscape and parkland, which, as the Garden City, was a crucial element in the addition to safety features of the basins. I mean, there's always the conflict in Toowoomba. We are the Garden City. It's a conflict between removing trees and people's safety. So you've got to try to balance that. There's more we can do. Toowoomba City had a strategy and then we had 13 years of drought. So it falls off people's uh, radar. And when you're doing budgets, it's always difficult to uh, something here needs doing and no, we need to continue the mitigation. Well, I don't think that'll happen in the future. We need to continue that. Uh, along with the community, partnering with the community, keeping them very informed of what we're doing and why we're doing it, and giving them confidence that should another event and when another event does come, that the effects of that will be mitigated as much as can possibly be done uh, to keep our community safe. Toowoomba's metaphorical rebirth is largely still in its infancy namely with the ongoing revitalisation of the CBD, the area that felt the full wrath of nature. Grand Central Shopping Centre, the largest shopping complex in the region, is nearing the final stages of a $400 million redevelopment in becoming a long-anticipated economic boost for the city. In early 2016, Toowoomba was gifted with the opening of the new City Library, an overdue upgrade to the tired former library which was demolished as part of the Grand Central Redevelopment, as well as providing a contemporary community space. In addition to the extensive road reparation works, including that done to the Toowoomba Range, in late 2015 construction finally began on the long-awaited Second Range Crossing, a 43 kilometre bypass that will see a significant decrease in heavy vehicle traffic travelling through the centre of the city, reducing noise whilst detouring trucks beyond Toowoomba north of the city before continuing westward, bypassing the city. There is no denying that the events of January 10, 2011 were horrific one which caused hundreds of millions of dollars of damages and destruction and resulted in the loss of two lives. Yet from the bad, good things emerge and from the water and mud came the revitalization of Toowoomba we are a witness to today. As one in a lifetime experience that I don't know that I really need to see again. Um, yes, you see it, it's, it blows you away to see what was on TV, but to actually be there and it was just a, out of this world, really was. Well, I think the, the events of the floods were quite surreal and devastating. Devastating was probably the, uh, emotionally and, uh, and, and infrastructure-wise and property-wise. And uh, the development we're seeing now, well, it's about time, I'd say. That's not one word, but it's quite stunning. Devastating and now stunning. And watch this space because there's more to come.